This presentation is a part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given at the bottom of this slide. In what follows, I'm going to discuss a few other miscellaneous language basics that haven't been discussed so far. One type of problem that can arise, especially in large-scale software projects, is what is known as a name collision or naming conflict. A name collision simply refers to the situation where an attempt is made to assign two or more different meanings to the same identifier in the same scope. For example, attempting to create two different global variables called x in the same program would constitute a name collision. In order to reduce the likelihood of name collisions, the C++ programming language has a feature known as namespaces. A namespace is simply a region in the code that provides a scope to the identifiers contained inside the region. In other words, a namespace is essentially a container for identifiers. Since each namespace is a separate scope, identifier names can safely be reused across namespaces, reducing the likelihood for naming conflicts. Now the syntax for the namespace is as shown on the slide. It starts with the namespace keyword, followed by an identifier which names the namespace, and then the body of the namespace is everything between the brace brackets that follow. So there's an opening brace bracket followed by the body of the namespace followed by the closing brace bracket. And the body can contain basically any C++ code and any identifiers that are declared inside the body of the namespace are automatically made to belong to the scope associated with the namespace. So for example, names of variables, function types, all of these identifiers will be made to belong to that namespace's scope. And the same identifier can be reused in different namespaces because each namespace is a separate scope. And a few other things about namespaces, the scope resolution operator, which we've seen before, the colon colon operator, it can be used to explicitly specify the namespace to which a particular identifier belongs. So you can prefix an identifier with a namespace followed by colon colon to say that you're referring to an uh, identifier that belongs to a particular namespace. The using statement can also be used to bring identifiers from other namespaces into the current scope, and some of this will be made more clear by way of an example which is coming up. On this slide, I have a code example that introduces two namespaces called Mike and Fred. So let's look at the code example in more detail. Uh, to begin with, I have a using statement, using std colon colon cout. What this does is it brings the identifier cout from the namespace std into the current scope. So below, I don't have to keep typing out std colon colon c out. I can just type c out, and because c out has been brought into the current scope, I can use this name to refer to the identifier. Then I have two namespaces, one called Mike, and then down below another namespace called Fred. In the namespace Mike, I have a, a variable called some value of type int. In the namespace Fred, I have a variable with the same name, some value. It has type double. But because these two different variables are in different namespaces, they're in separate scopes, so it, the names don't conflict, even though the names of these two variables are the same. If we look at the Mike namespace above, this namespace also contains a function called initialize, which takes no parameters and returns void. The Fred namespace also has a function called initialize, which takes no parameters and returns void. But again, although these functions have the same signature, same name, same, same parameters and return type and so on, this doesn't cause any conflicts because the functions are defined in different namespaces, so they, they don't conflict with one another. Then if we look at the function func in the code at the bottom of the slide, we have some code which is using some of the code from the two namespaces up above. So on this first line here, we want to call the initialize function in the mic namespace. In other words, we want to invoke this function here. So to do this, what we do is we prefix the name of the function initialize by the namespace mic and the scope resolution operator. So this function call here is going to call the version of the initialize function which is in the mic namespace. In other words, this function here. On the other hand, if we wanted to call the initialize function from the Fred namespace, in other words, this function here, what we would do is we would say Fred colon colon initialize. So we're explicitly saying the initialize function in the Fred namespace is the one that we want to invoke. Sometimes you might not want to keep typing out Mike colon colon or Fred colon colon. In other words, you don't want to have to explicitly identify this, the particular namespace that an identifier appears in, in which case you can bring it into the current scope with a using statement. So you could say using my colon colon initialize, what this does is it brings the initialize identifier from the mic namespace into the current scope, 
And then we can just refer to it by its name initialized instead of having to give the qualified name with Mike colon colon in front of it. So this function call here will call Mike initialize. At this point, I'd like to briefly talk about memory allocation in C++. So to allocate memory on the heap, we use a new statement. And to deallocate memory that's allocated with a new statement, we use a delete statement. So this is somewhat similar to malloc and free in C if you happen to be familiar with the C programming language. Uh, but there are some differences that we'll see later. There's basically two forms of the new and delete statements. There's the non-array type of new and delete, which allocate and free a single object. And then there's an array version of new and delete, which allocate whole arrays of objects, multiple objects. And the difference between them, they're distinguished by square brackets when they're used. So this is better illustrated by way of an example. So for, suppose that we want to allocate an array of 64 characters. So we can use the, the new, op, new statement saying that we want to allocate um, space for 64 characters. So it's, this is an array new statement because of the square brackets. We're allocating an array of multiple items. And what's returned by new is a pointer to that chunk of memory that's allocated. So it allocates space for 64 characters and returns a pointer to it. And then we're taking the pointer that's returned by new and storing it into this character pointer variable called buffer. It's a pointer to a character. If we want to free this, this memory that's pointed to by the buffer, we would then use array delete. What makes this array delete is the square brackets here. So we say delete what the pointer buffer points to, and that will deallocate the memory that was just allocated with new. If we want to allocate a single item, for example, suppose we want to allocate a single double, we could say new double. And because there's no square brackets here, this is just the non-array version of new. It returns a pointer to the, the, the memory that's been allocated, which we then save into this pointer variable called x. And if we later wanted to delete that memory, in other words, free the memory, we would say delete and then the pointer name. And in this case, this is a non-array delete because there's no square brackets in here. And what's important to point out with respect to non-array and array versions of new and delete is you have to match them. So if you allocate memory with the array version of new, you have to free it with the array version of delete. If you allocate memory with the non-array version of new, then you have to free it with the non-array version of delete. So for example, the code here has, that's shown at the bottom of the slide has a very severe error. Here we've allocated a, an array of 64 characters using the array version of new, and then we save the pointer that we get into this variable called buffer. But then here we make a fatal mistake, which is that when we try to free the memory by using delete, Instead of using the array version of delete here, which is what we should be using because we use the array version of new, we accidentally use the non-array version. It's the non-array version because there's no square brackets here. This is wrong and it can cause all kinds of very bad things to happen. So it's very important to make sure that you match up the array and non-array versions of new and delete. 